I've had a few videos in mind lately, but given the current social climate, nobody's really wanted to go out and take photos or go over and hang out. Understandably so, it's a safe thing to do and I encourage you guys all to do the same. So for today's video, I was only able to get one person and you may or may not recognize this person. Dude, take that thing off, you look ridiculous. See, Dan brought me in because I'm just much, much better than he is at editing landscapes. Well, I mean, that's just not true. Today, we're gonna edit your landscapes and make decent shots turn into epic edits. Since nobody's going anywhere anytime soon, why don't you guys grab a landscape shot they took a while ago and follow along with the tutorial. And since you're so smart, why don't you teach them how to do it? Wait. I get to sit at your desk. Yes, but just do the tutorial and don't touch anything else, please. Yep. What did I just say? Yeah, 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 do the tutorial. Yeah, we got this, don't worry. Listen, you handle that. I'm gonna go self-quarantine, mostly just to get away from you. <sighs> All right, now that that loser's gone, let's get into the tutorial. All right, before we get into the actual editing, couple things I wanna mention. What's more important than the actual editing itself is obviously the time of day in which you shoot it. You can still create some pretty cool results with like a midday shot, but if you're shooting at golden hour, blue hour, during a nice sunset or sunrise, obviously that's gonna grant you the best results. First things first, you're gonna wanna open up the photo in Lightroom or Camera Raw, depending on what your preference is. This part's personal preference and how you wanna make it look. I know what you're thinking. Daniel, how can you start a tutorial with personal preference? I might as well just edit it myself. Hear me out. I still want you guys to have some sort of creativity, some sort of flair in what you're doing. Make it personal, make it your own. I don't want you copying exactly what I'm doing. I'm just giving you like the skeleton. You gotta build the meat and around it, you know? Make it your own. So, first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go in, like I said, Lightroom or Camera Raw, and adjust your hue saturation, your colors, make it the way you want. One thing I like to do right off the bat, lower the highlights right down, you'll get a lot more detail in the skies and stuff like that, and then bring those shadows right up. It's gonna flatten out your image, make it sort of more neutral, but I like this as a starting point because that's where you can grab a lot of details, focus on what you wanna isolate, what you wanna really draw your attention to. If some parts are too dark and the highlights are too light, you're kinda of limited in what you can see and what you can focus on. Once we've adjusted that, played with the exposure contrast a bit, our hue saturation, we've made it our own, you're gonna open it up in Photoshop. So we've got our photo open in Photoshop. What I did here is I just made it a little bit of more of orange and teal. This is our base, this is what we're working with. Step one is you're gonna duplicate the layer, Command or Control J, depending Mac or PC, and you're gonna convert that new layer that you just made to a smart object so that you can add smart filters to it and those filters can be edited in the future and without damaging or non-destructively editing your photo. So we've got our smart layer and what you're gonna do with this one, Lightroom or Photoshop aside, is press Command Shift A, or Control Shift A to open up the Camera Raw window. Now, once that's opened up, on the bar at the top of the window, you're gonna go to the radial filter, also J on the keyboard, and what you're gonna do is draw a nice big circle around what you wanna focus on. So for us, we're gonna, we're gonna sacrifice some of the details in the lower bit of the picture and up in the sky because there's not really much going on. Obviously, we wanna focus more on the waterfall and the staircase because that's our point of interest. All right, so you're gonna draw that big circle and you're gonna lower the exposure and shadows, make them darker so that you're sort of losing detail and make sure you have outside selected. If you have inside selected, it's gonna black out the middle of your photo. You don't want that, doesn't look good. Outside selected, you're creating a vignette and Lightroom and Camera Raw also have vignette options, but I find that when you do it with the radial filter, you have more control over the shape and where it's going and you can move the focal point of the vignette and just adds a little bit more depth that way. If you want to further blackout areas, you can go to the graduated filter and just sort of pull down, make it even darker. For the sake of this picture, I think that's a little bit too dark, so we're not going to touch that. But we've got our radial filter. I'm happy with that. Once you guys are happy with your radial filter, click OK. 
It's gonna make the changes in Photoshop as you can see. The next step is to add an HSL adjustment layer, hue saturation adjustment layer on top of the layer you just created. And what you're gonna do here is go to your reds, bring those down the saturation just a little bit. Depending on the photo, if you have something in the photo that's bright red and it's the focal point like a barn or something, then don't saturate the red, again, on a per project basis. And then what you're gonna do is invert the layer mask by hitting Command or Control I, and it's gonna hide everything you did. Now that your hue saturation layer has been inverted, you're seeing no difference, and what you're gonna do is with your brush tool, you're gonna brush back just the areas that you wanna desaturate. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the reds out of the grass here, and I'm gonna leave the reds in, in the steps. I like how it has like a reddish wood finish to it, so we're gonna leave that there. All right, we're gonna do something similar now, but again, mixed in with personal preference. We're gonna add another adjustment layer, this time selective color. Now you're gonna go through and select your colors based on what you like. For example, I like my blacks to be a little bit lighter and a little bit more on the blue side. So I'm gonna bring up the cyan, bring down the yellow. It kinda cools it off a little bit, which you can then counter by going to your whites and then adding a little bit more yellow, adding a little bit more magenta just to create that um, orange and teal feel. That's my personal preference. If you want to play around with your colors, you might have like a great sunset shot where you know the sky is illuminated purple and you want to just adjust that a little bit, go for it. Okay, once you're happy with your selective color, we're gonna move on to the next step. And what we're gonna do is Command Shift N to create a new layer, and we're gonna set that layer mode to screen. You're gonna hit B for your brush tool, make sure your brush is nice and soft and nice and large, and then you're gonna go over to the color picker and select like an orangey yellow. It doesn't, you don't have to be too precise with this. Again, we're gonna adjust it a little bit later. And what we're gonna do is set our flow down to like two to nine percent depending on your thing i find five is like a good standard set your flow to five percent now on that layer that you've set to screen mode you're just going to brush in some sunlight on the focal points so for us that's the grass i'm going to shrink my brush down a little bit do the stairs maybe hit that waterfall just a little and we're going to go into the sky and just sort of simulate a bit of sunlight coming in. You know, if you're doing this with a brush that's 100%, it's gonna look awful, but again, the key is that 5% flow so that it's just barely adding something to the photo. Now, what we're gonna do is add a layer mask to that and invert the mask, Command-I. Everything you just did disappears. What, what? Why, are we, why are we doing all this work if we're just hiding it? So once you've hid that layer, you're gonna take your brush again, this time with about a 60% flow, and you're gonna brush back those highlights where you want them. So we want them on like the stairs, on the grass, on a little bit of the mountain, the sky, and not in any of the shadows. Erasing them from that shadows is so important. It's gonna create like this really cool contrast that's really gonna make your photos pop. In theory, you could just er like use the layer mask without inverting it so that you're just erasing away anything that's in the shadows. I like to do it the other way because um, you sort of see what you're adding back. If you do it subtly, it looks really good and it kind of adds another dimension to your photos. So don't feel, don't feel bad about adding these kinds of things in. It's not cheating. I don't care what anybody says. You're making your, you're touching up your photos. You're making them look dope. So here we go, you can see the before and after. It's subtle, but it's making that photo pop just a little bit more, a little oomph. Okay, next step, we're gonna go create a new adjustment layer, hue saturation again, but this one, in the hue saturation window, we're gonna click this box with a little downward pointing arrow. That means it's gonna clip to the previous layer. It's only gonna affect our fake sunshine layer. So clip that down, and what we're gonna do, what I like to do is increase the saturation a little bit, and then adjust the hue. Sometimes you want it to be a little bit more yellow. In this case, I want it to be a tiny bit more orange. So we're not, we're not getting too crazy with it, but we're just adjusting it a bit. Let's see what the difference is. Yeah, you can see it's just a little bit more orange. So now our photo's starting to come along. Um, you're gonna go back down to that layer where you added the camera raw filter, that smart layer, your actual image itself. 
double click the smart filter, the camera raw filter, and it's gonna pop back open. If you need to make adjustments to the vignette or to anything you've done in camera raw, now's the time to do it. So I opened it up. I think the vignette is a little bit too dark, so I'm gonna just raise the shadows a tiny bit, not too much, and raise that exposure just a little. We still want that vignette, but we don't want it to overpower the image. You're gonna go back up to the top, your hue saturation layer, select that so that the next layer gets put on top of that. And the next layer we're gonna add is a curves adjustment layer. Hit that and what you're gonna do is drag the middle of the curves layer up a little bit. Again, it's gonna brighten up your image, but don't get too excited about your bright image because we're gonna invert the mask and turn it all off. You guys are getting it. I don't even know why I'm talking at this point. And what you're gonna do is use the brush tool at about 20% flow and you're gonna brush back those highlights that you just added in using the white brush. So again, we wanna focus on the steps, which is a pain in my butt, but necessary to make this photo cool. And we're gonna focus a bit on the waterfall, make that waterfall pop a bit more, get those highlights of the waterfall, brush those back in maybe on the edge of the cliff a little. If you need a little bit more power, go over it again, because like I said, you're set to 20% opacity. You can even brush some areas with a bit of a larger brush, go in there and get details again when you go over it. We're gonna just lightly brush over this. Again, when you're doing this, you wanna focus on the highlights and don't brush back in the shadows. You want the shadows to be nice and dark. You want that contrast, that's what's gonna make it really pop. And the nightmare of me having to do these stairs. Why did I pick this picture with these stairs? Uh, I'm gonna do the stairs, we're gonna fast forward it. Once I'm done the stairs, we'll get back to the tutorial. All right, my hand's about to fall off from the stairs, but that part's done. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is add a gradient map adjustment layer. Lots of adjustment layers throughout this whole thing. Poof, turns your image black and white if you have black and white selected, but don't fear. We're gonna click on this little gradient map, click this, double click this square at the bottom, it's gonna bring up the color picker, and we're gonna set that left color picker to a blue. It's The blue is up to you. I find usually like a darkish royal blue is nice. And then on the far right side, we're gonna replace the white with a yellowy orange, something kind of golden, okay? Right now, we're gonna click OK, and our picture looks ridiculous. What is this? This is like the Golden State Warriors uniform. It doesn't look good. Don't panic, we'll be fine. Now, to make this look better, we're gonna go to our layer style, which is currently set to normal, and we are gonna change that to soft light. Once we change it to soft light, it's looking a little bit better, but it's still very blue and very orange. So we're gonna lower that opacity right down to about 30%. If you turn it on and off, you can see a subtle difference. And here's where you can go in and say, you know what, the blue that I picked originally, it's too purpley for me. I want it a little bit more greenish. So we're gonna make it a little bit more cyan. And you can actually see in real time the adjustments that are being made while you're doing this. Our yellow, let's make it a little bit more orange. That's good with me. Then you're gonna click OK, get rid of that, and you can see that it's still a little bit too prominent, so I'm gonna lower mine down to about 15%. It's subtle, but it just adds a little bit of color. Again, if, you don't, if you're not a fan of that, leave that step out, but I like it because it's kind of like a, a way to unify your photos. You still want that creativity and originality, but you also have it bringing together that consistent theme. Once that's done, we are gonna hit another curves adjustment layer and you're gonna bring up that midpoint again. We're repeating the process that we did from before. We're gonna, we're gonna invert this layer mask so you can't see anything that's going on. Use a big soft round brush with about 22% flow is just very lightly. You're gonna brush in some of the mid-tones, some of the areas of focus around the center of the photo that just need to be brightened up just a little bit. But again, not too, too much, and you're not focusing too much on your highlights. We still want that contrast. Once you've brushed it in, you can always double click the curves layer again and play with it, raise it, lower it to see what you've done, sort of 
you know, if, if you're not really happy with it, you always have that adjustment. That's the benefit to working with adjustment layers. But so far, we've got a pretty solid photo going. Let's see what our original looks like versus what we're putting out. Now that we're looking at it, I'm gonna add a little bit of a graduated filter on the left and right sides because I feel like the focal point should be more on the waterfall on the staircase, but we're getting a lot of extra stuff. I'm gonna adjust that radial filter to come in just a little bit, make it a little bit smaller. Now we've got that focal point. Okay, so original, edited. You can see there's a lot more focus on the staircase and the waterfall as opposed to the outer edges of the image, which is nice. One final thing we're gonna do is we are gonna duplicate our photo layer and we're gonna rasterize it because for the most part, we're happy with how it looks. From here, we're gonna hit Command Shift and U or Control Shift U for PC. That's gonna desaturate it. We're gonna go up to Filter at the top, Other, High Pass Filter, and we are gonna set this. Again, this is very photo dependent, four or five. You wanna get the details, but you don't wanna go too hard, otherwise you get some like haloing and stuff starts to glow when it shouldn't glow. You don't want that. Hit OK, change that layer to overlay, and it's just gonna up the sharpness of your photo a little bit. You might not see it in the video, but you will see it when you're editing your photos. You can zoom in and see. For me, it's adding a lot more detail in the shrubbery and like the actual staircase itself, even the, the waterfall. If it's adding too much detail in places you don't want it, you can add a layer mask and brush away so that the non-focal points of the photo aren't as crisp and you'll have more focus on what you're looking at. Adjust the opacity, maybe it's a little bit too harsh, but once you've done that, you've essentially completed the whole tutorial. So let's take a look at our before and our after photo. And there you have it, folks. Epic landscape editing. Since you're at home, locked down, can't leave your house, just get a bunch of photos, edit the crap out of them, make your Instagram look great, tag me at underscore DM creative, and then do all the other important stuff. Like this video, comment, subscribe if you are not already, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Now I have to leave because I changed a whole bunch of things on Daniel's desk and he's gonna be pissed. Where did he put all the... Dan!